they cry. They ask for help. They don't play because children on the run from war forgot how to. And eventually, they stop crying and they stop asking for help. Millions of children are on the run from the war in Syria, but they have no voice. They are silent and they are hidden, hidden behind figures, numbers and statistics, and even sometimes silenced by the Mediterranean Sea. We travel back and forth to the Syrian border <clears throat> to document the lives of the refugee children. We meet them, we talk to them, and we photograph them. And one thing that overshadows all other issues is a story about separation from family and from friends. Today, we tell you a story about two ordinary boys, Mustafa and Abdurrahman. They lived normal lives. They both grew up in Syria. They went to school, played with their friends, and did their homework. But then came the war, and forced upon the two boys two very different destinies. Mustafa, he lives in Denmark now. He left Syria on board a ship, with his father holding his one hand and him holding his teddy in the other. The teddy was actually the only thing he brought with him. Behind him, he left bombs, devastation and war. But he also left behind his home, his family and his friends. And like any other child who ran from war, he's afraid. Afraid of the new and unknown places he will come to. And afraid to become a stranger among strangers. Mustafa, he traveled for thousands of kilometers before he finally reached the Danish border. And he arrived exhausted, hungry and scared. But now, Mustafa goes to a Danish school and his teachers, they try to embrace him and give him a normal childhood. But even though he feels safe in Denmark, he still miss Syria and he worries about his friends back home. Abdurrahman lives in Turkey. We met him close to the Syrian border and we took his picture. Abdurrahman told us about his escape in the night from Syria into Turkey. He was only seven years old. He was afraid, afraid of the dark, afraid of the soldiers, afraid not to make it to the other side and even afraid to be shot at. But Abdurrahman is still dreaming. He's dreaming about the Syria that he once knew. When he lies in bed at night, he told us that he's still trying to remember what it was like to live back home. But again, he's afraid that everything he knew had been bombed and that he will never be able to return. So we left the Syrian border and went back to Denmark. We made a photo exhibition and we called it They Are Still Dreaming with the pictures and the stories of the Syrian children. And out of the thousands of thousands of pictures we took, 15 were selected for the exhibition. The picture of Abdurrahman was one of them. We invited a Danish school class to our exhibition. Man and I were there to talk about the pictures and, of course, to tell the stories on behalf of the Syrian children. And one of the kids who came to the exhibition was Mustafa. Mustafa was walking around in between our pictures and suddenly he stops. He stops in front of one of the pictures and he freezes. And then he called my name. I went up to Mustafa and I saw he was crying. I put my arms around him and then he whispered, I know him. That's my good friend, Abdurrahman, from Syria. Suddenly, he was no longer among strangers. A friend from back home was there on the picture just in front of him. 
Mustafa is still dreaming. Dreaming about being reunited in the peaceful Syria he knew, together with his friend, Abdurrahman. Inshallah. <laughs>